Before starting, you need to think. I want to protect and restore mangroves. Not, I want to plant, mangroves. Instead of planting monocultures with limited benefits for people and nature, aim for restoring mangroves with multiple and naturally distributed species. This can be achieved through ecological restoration approaches. Ecological mangrove restoration is about restoring conditions under which mangroves will thrive. When that happens, nature will do the rest and mangroves will deliver their full value for people and nature. Follow this three-step process to successfully restore mangroves. Where should you restore mangroves? Start with assessing whether mangroves grew there before. You can do this with mapping tools paired with site visits. If there were no mangroves before, you should avoid introducing them as this could destroy other important ecosystems. If mangroves were there before, ask. What happened to the mangroves that were here? Why have they not recovered naturally? This will be different for each site. For example, were they lost due to cutting for charcoal? Development of a dam? Maybe due to development of rice fields or aquaculture ponds? Understanding whether the causes of loss can be reversed is critical. Secondly, what enabling conditions are required for restoration to be successful? To identify required interventions, you need to understand the current conditions of your site, such as soil moisture, freshwater supply and salinity, input of sediments and elevation and slope relative to the sea level, and study a nearby healthy site as reference to guide you. In parallel, you should investigate the social factors that hamper mangrove regeneration, including land tenure and land uses. For this, you can set up a diverse working group with local communities, government representatives and others. Lastly, why are you restoring mangroves? The next step is to set clear restoration goals together with your stakeholders to determine where and how to create the right conditions for mangrove restoration. Is the goal, for example, to support coastal fisheries, enhance biodiversity, or provide coastal protection? Make sure that success criteria are clearly defined so you can monitor them and correct your restoration strategy when needed. Now let's dive into some of the most applied technical restoration activities to allow mangroves to grow back naturally. Our hydrology, water level and wave action appropriate for mangroves? Mangroves thrive when submerged just the right amount of time and appropriately flushed by tidal or freshwater flows, ensuring the right salinity levels. To create the right hydrological conditions, you may need to correct the water flow, drainage or land features of your site by clearing litter from tidal channels, digging channels, or breaking dikes. Also, observe if mangrove seeds from nearby mature mangroves are naturally swept into your site. If not, you may need to dig channels to your restoration site to support this. If this is not working, you may consider enrichment planting to assist the natural regeneration process. And are the sedimentation rates appropriate for mangroves to grow? Most mangroves rely on fresh sediment input from rivers and tidal action. If this is disturbed, for example, by coastal development, mangroves may die. Also, with insufficient sediments, mangroves cannot keep pace with rising sea levels and may drown. Permeable structures in front of the coastline are an example of a measure to trap sediments. Such structures also create calm conditions with low wave energy and slow currents. In such conditions seedlings can take root and grow well and sustainably. Finally, are there any other threats to mangrove growth? For example, too many grazers such as cows or goats can affect mangrove recruitment. Such threats can be quite easily prevented with appropriate measures. 
you can implement these restoration activities with experts and with communities. For example, in Guinea-Bissau, community members broke up hardened topsoils, breached dikes, and dug creeks to improve the distribution of water and flush salt out of the system. As a result, in most places mangrove seedlings have naturally re-established, and even faster than expected. By following these steps, you have addressed some of the most important biophysical conditions for mangroves to regrow naturally. In the next video, we show how to ensure that the mangroves will be sustained for the long term. These aspects should be considered in restoration plans and will be covered in the next video, Sustaining Mangroves.